In the theatre, we need to be able to control our lighting fixtures from a distance. We use a system called DMX for this task. DMX, or Digital Multiplex, is a digital signalling protocol that allows a control or master device to communicate to many slave devices. We generally use a cable with 5-pin XLR type connectors to transmit DMX signal, but we'll get into some other methods later. Note that the 5-pin XLR connector is different to the 3-pin connector used in audio applications. We can connect intelligent fixtures directly to the lighting console and use a 5-pin XLR cable. This allows us to send signals to the fixture and control it. Most intelligent fixtures can also output a copy of the DMX signal they receive. This allows us to connect multiple fixtures in a row, saving cable. This is known as daisy chaining. Great. At this point, we can control the fixtures from the console. There is, however, an issue with this configuration. We have no way to tell the fixtures apart from one another, so any signal that we send to one would cause them both to behave in the same way. Almost everything we do has more than one fixture, so we give each a number to identify it. This works for a few fixtures, but can get confusing when we have a lot. Before we continue, we need to talk about the physical limitations of DMX. It was designed in the late 80s and at the time was designed to control 512 channels, or parameters. Since then, lighting technology has progressed a fair way. Some fixtures, including the moving wash fixtures in the Coastlands Theatre, have modes that use over 200 channels. It has become necessary to use multiple universes of DMX, each with a capacity of 512 channels. This bit is important to remember. 512 channels equals one universe. Each universe must be on a separate cable run, but we'll get into that a bit later. To make things clear for everyone, we have a standard naming pattern for DMX addresses. We can think of each lighting fixture as a house on a street. The universe is the street and the address is the house's number on that street. We write the fixture's address like this, with the universe first and then the address. Note that the term address can refer to the fixture's universe and location, or just the location of the fixture within a universe. Let's name our lights from before with the standard format. We're doing great so far, but we have another issue. Each of the 512 channels in one universe can control one parameter each of a light. For something basic like an incandescent fixture, they only have one controllable parameter. In our example, we have some intelligent fixtures. These fixtures have many more parameters that also need to be controlled. For each parameter that needs to be controlled, the fixture will need at least one additional DMX channel assigned to it. Our moving profiles require 33 channels of DMX in their most basic configuration. Let's add this information to our example. The address of the fixture is the first DMX channel that it uses. We have set our first fixture to start at channel 1 of universe 1. We know from before that it needs 33 channels to be able to control all of its parameters. This means it uses all of the DMX channels between 1 and 33 on universe 1. We could put our second fixture on any of the remaining channels, but it is standard to use the lowest possible channel. This avoids leaving weird empty gaps on our street, and makes our lives easier if we are trying to fix problems in our lighting rig later on. The first available address is channel 34 of universe 1, so we will assign that to our second fixture. When we use more than one universe in a lighting rig, we have to keep the data from each universe separated from the other universes. The fixtures don't know what universe they are a part of, only their address within some universe. Each universe must be on a completely separate cable run to avoid signal crossover. Note, the control channels of a fixture cannot cross over multiple universes. Sometimes it is impractical to use a daisy chain setup for a large lighting rig. Daisy chaining is not always the most efficient way to use cable. When this is the case, we can use a DMX splitter to duplicate one incoming signal into many outgoing signals. These can then be sent to different places within the rig. It also allows us to avoid using very long daisy chains. These can cause issues with our lighting rig. Let's consider the effect each fixture in the chain has on the DMX signal. I'm sure you are familiar with the game Chinese Whispers. People get in a line and whisper a phrase to the next person. Often the initial message is very different by the time it reaches the other end. This shows us that every time a piece of information is processed, some of the initial information can be lost or changed. 
Consider a long chain of 30 fixtures. As a DMX signal passes down the chain, each fixture interprets it, follows the instruction given at its address, and then passes the signal on to the next fixture. By the time we get to the last fixture, some unexpected behavior can develop in the system. This behavior can occur anywhere in the system, not just at the tail end, sometimes making signal-related issues hard to troubleshoot. By introducing some clever electronics in the correct place, we can greatly reduce the effects of signal breakdown. Many modern fixtures have circuits within them to combat the effects of signal breakdown. Otherwise, a DMX terminator can be installed in the output of the final fixture in the chain. Finally, we need to talk about other methods of sending control signals to lighting fixtures. DMX signal is sent through 5-pin XLR cable. This is the most common. Almost every dimmer or intelligent fixture has 5-pin connectors for DMX. We can also use Ethernet cables as part of our control system. Ethernet cables were designed for computer networking and are a vital part of how any device connects to the internet. Some clever people realized that these cables are already installed in many buildings and created other signaling protocols to run over the existing cable. Signaling protocols such as DMX are the different ways that signals can be sent over a cable. There are two that you need to know about for lighting control over Ethernet. These are ArtNet and SACN or Streaming ACN. These systems greatly increase the capacities of a single cable. ArtNet allows for 32,768 universes over one Ethernet cable, while SACN allows for 63,999. ArtNet also allows for remote configuration so that things such as fixture addresses can be updated from a distance. Some fixtures are able to take Ethernet input directly into the fixture, but for other fixtures and most dimmers, an ArtNet or SACN converter will need to be used. In summary, the DMX signal travels through a cable with 5-pin XLR type connectors. We can use this system to control dimmers and intelligent fixtures. We split up each universe into 512 channels and different fixtures require different amounts based on the parameters we want to control. We assign each fixture an address so it knows its place in the rig and can interpret the control signals correctly. We can use splitters to increase the amount of cable runs under one universe of control. Ethernet protocols such as ArtNet and SACN open up huge possibilities for our lighting rigs.